Hey there folks. I just want to show you a couple things about um, Lightroom presets and archiving those images. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this video up is I've had several questions come to me in the last couple of days about uh, various file formats and how to save their uh, people's settings. So, um, first of all, can probably pick a picture that's a little easier to see our settings on. Silly picture of this funny kid here. So, one thing I don't think a lot of people realize that Lightroom can do is called virtual copies. Alright? So, if you go under photo, you have create virtual copy its command apostrophe and what this does is it looks like in your Lightroom library it looks like there are more pictures than there are of the same one so I can hit a command apostrophe and you can see if you look right here in this corner there's a little kind of a page curl that's showing that it's a virtual copy and it says copy one copy two copy three and so on and what it is, is on disk, it's just a set of instructions. It says, okay, go back to the original image and then apply these presets to it, or these settings. It doesn't have to be a preset. It could be any setting you want to do, okay? You want a deep vignette, or maybe this one, you want a different crop on it, right? So it doesn't matter what's in any settings Lightroom can do, including um, healing brush or uh, adjustment brushes, gradients, any of that kind of stuff, you can apply onto these virtual copies. All right, so but what if you want to actually save a version of this? Well, a couple of things uh, come to mind. First of all, if you're working in Lightroom, the benefit of doing this, if you're just going to keep them in your library and access them from there, it's great because these virtual copies take up very, very little space on your disk. Whereas if you're to actually export a whole image with these settings or make a copy of each of these to apply your settings to, then you're going to start eating up hard drive space. But if you do want to save a physical copy somewhere, you can do a couple of things. So let's look right here. You can export to, and you could export to the same place. Let's say you want an actual physical copy in the same folder as the original. You can choose that. Or you can ask to, to choose one later. You can also tell it to put it back in this catalog when it's done. So you could save to original folder and then bring it back into this catalog, okay? And you could save and choose a new name if there's a problem. You got your renaming options there. Do you want to include videos or not? And then this is where you choose uh, your JPEG settings or your file settings. JPEG, as we know, is the sharing setting. You've got your quality over here, 0 to 100. Color space. Uh, we probably should go into that at some point, uh, depending on where you're going. If this is for archival purpose, Lightroom is showing you images in Profoto if you shot in RAW, so you could just keep them there. Uh, I would probably choose a PSD or TIFF if uh, if I was going. I wanted to bake in these settings, but let's just show you one thing here: original. If we choose original. So I'm exporting a virtual copy. I shoot everything in RAW for the most part. When you choose original, it doesn't let you resize or adjust sharpening. Uh, none of this stuff happens. We're going to do it the same folder and we're going to add to catalog. We're going to see what happens. So look at this. We have a new RAW file, a copy of this file with these settings on it. So an actual physical copy in our raw format. So that's a that gives you you still have 
100% control over this as if it was this original image. So for some reason you may want that. A friend of mine was looking to do that exact thing. If you actually want a, a baked in copy, consider uh, depending, it, you just have to consider the output. But JPEGs are great for sharing. Anybody can use them for printing. Uh, if you use a very uh, high quality, you really don't lose much, uh, except for some file size. I do like Photoshop files for my um, editing, kind of going into Photoshop, jumping around files, um, just for the fact that they are a little bit smaller than the TIFF files. However, if you have a compatibility issue, TIFF files are more readable by more programs than a PSD is. Also, you need to consider sharpening, and we probably will have to look at that in another episode. So if you like this video, be sure and tell your friends. Check out reflectedpixel.com for updates and news. You can sign to, into our newsletter there. We just started a uh, newsletter. We talk about photography and the little Sony Next camera that I'm using now. Uh, most of the stuff applies to about all cameras, but there will be a little bit of specific Sony stuff just because that's what I'm kind of into right now. You can check out the galleries here. And uh, thanks for watching.